Hello traders, it's ETM Effects, and in this lesson, we're going to cover the inner mechanics of the silver bullet strategy. We're going to take out the bugs and focus mostly on the factors that make the strategy more probable. So our goal at taking this approach would be minimizing the risk and maximizing profit with a common sense approach of buying low and selling high. Everybody understands the concept of buying low and selling high, but not many can implement it in charts. We're going to operate at extreme levels. And we're going to use the time and price theory at its peak of its abilities. And we're going to use the external liquidity as our defense. So before we proceed, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And comment. Let us know what you want me to cover next. So our first objective is to minimize risk and maximize profit. And how we're going to do that? We're going to do that by buying low and selling high, operating at range extremes. And how we're going to put that into a chart? Basically, you're looking for a daily reversal. You're looking for your candle extreme. So if it's a bullish day, so if it's a bullish daily candle, you would want to trade at the low of the day to take advantage of the entire ride. If it's a uh, bearish candle, a red candle, you're looking to catch the top, the high of the day to take advantage of the entire ride. And here you can see, let's use this candle for example. This is a bearish candle. but This wick right here, this was the high of the day. And our goal here is to catch this high of the day. Same with here. This wick was the high of the day before price dropped down. Here in this bullish scenario, this was the low of the day. This was the low of the day. So basically, you want to catch the lowest risk probability, which is the daily extreme, and take advantage of the entire ride. Let's get into how we're going to do this. So an important variable we need to identify the high and low of the day, which is the extremes, is the time and price theory. And as you can see on the screen, this, these boxes that I have, this is the New York session. And if you look closely, the high and the low of the day, a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times, it's a numbers game, occurs in New York session. So you can see here, here you have the high of the day New York session. Here you have the low of the day New York session. Here you have the high of the day New York session. Here you have the low of the day New York session. Here you have the high of the day and the low of the day New York session. Here you have the low of the day, high of the day. Here you did a, here your high of the day was your uh, daily open. So this nullifies. Here you have the low of the day New York session. Here you have the low of the day New York session. Here you have the high of the day New York session, and so on and so on. So let's let's take a deeper look into this. So your ideal da daily scenario would be something like this. You would want the low of the day to occur in your New York session, right? This is it and obviously inverted, right? So you would want your high of the day to occur in your New York session if the day is meant to be bearish. So what we're going to do here is take out the guesswork. So what we're not going to do is trade our daily high or low in our New York session, right? We're going to use this more as a clue, right? We're going to use this more of a context to determine what's going to happen going forward. It's close to uh, why New York session traders are way more successful than uh, London session traders just for the fact that you have more data to look to the left side of and in this instant if if we know that a lot of times the high and or the low of the day occurs in New York session we're gonna wait for that 10 a.m that 10 a.m time frame right that 10 a.m happens right after the box so that's the New York session peak it's right after our session ends so once we have our context, if the higher of the low of the day has been formed or not, or if it's, if it's at our higher, uh, high or low of the day as the 10 a.m. candle opens, or if it's in the middle of the range, that's where we can build our context. So again, we're going to focus on that 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. 
candle, that one hour candle. And we're going to use the micro time frames to get an entry within that time frame. So let's go over this example real quick. So what we're waiting for is that 10 a.m. candle, which would be our next candle. And we would want our next candle to be bearish and we would want to see a wick because we're going to conduct business in the wick. But why right here, right? Why this specific area and why right now instead of all the other times, right? Obviously, the timing. The second is price is at its daily high. Why is it at its daily high? Because as you can see to the left, this was our previous high price to the previous high and the day starts at the daily candle open so 5 p.m eastern time so if this was a daily candle if this was a daily candle the price open was right here price went down a little bit but really really barely wicked down and came up right here and if you look at it from a daily perspective the, the daily candle doesn't even have a wick right now because it's fully bullish so we would wait for the candle to at least come up a little bit form that wick and then drop down to hopefully close bearish or at least close bullish but it not 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 it wouldn't be a complete candle something like let's say if this would be a complete bullish candle we would want the daily candle to finish at least somewhere like this and the rest is a wick so we can take advantage of this wick range for a sell for a daily reversal right so what you would wait for is what you would wait for is you would go in your micros and you would wait for a stop hunt. You would wait for that high of the day that happened in our New York session to be hunted, that session high. And once price takes that level out, traps the buyers who would want to continue buying price and flips down, you would trade the 50% of the range or the base. So what would you want to see in the micro time frames, which would be your five minute or the one minute, depends on your preference, right? What you would want to see is you would want the low of the day in this instant, or let's say inverted would be high of the day. We would want the low of the day, which would be our extreme. You would want your low of the day to be taken out. So you would want to see price. One second, you would want to see price come down here take the swing and come back inside and as you can see here you would pull out your fib you would gauge the range once price crosses the 50 percent of that range or if there's a base that would be better but let's say you don't see a base if you uh, take the 50 percent of the range and continue higher so you would get in a buy right here and your aim would obviously be your one-to-one -one right here you can take you can take a uh, the trade right here to get a one to one or you could at least aim to the daily open which would be right here where price entered so what you're with the aim behind this stop hunt is to form that daily wick to form trading at that daily wick and uh it's to form that one hour wick before price changes direction completely which is post our new york session So what you would want to see now is that stop hunt. Why? Because that's the current high of the day, which is our extreme. And you would want to see that wick, which would occur in your stop hunt. So you're waiting for that liquidity run right there. So let's see. Okay, price broke that level. Let's see if it comes back into the range. Okay, price came back into the range. So now what you do, you pull out your low and your high, which would be your range. This is the low that formed. This is the low that formed the stop hunt, and this is the stop hunt, which is obviously a wick. So now what you do is, you could also do this if there is a base. So let's say there was a base, a consolidation that happened right prior to the break. You could use that. That would even be better. But in this example, let's use the range. So once price reaches the fair price right here, you would get in a sell. And you can always do a one-to-one -one because these are equally quarters. So if you get in a trade right here and your take profit is right here, your stop loss is right here, this is a clean one-to-one. -one. Or you can target lower. A lot of times these trades have potential to run anywhere from 1R to 4R. So you would always want to take at least a partial profit at that 1 to 1. And then let your, let's say, 75% uh, of your trade run post taking the initial profit. 
Okay, so you would have gotten once price touches this level. So this is our entry model in a nutshell, right? But why is this stop hunt important, right? Why is why did we say in the beginning of this lesson that the stop hunt is our defense? It's our defense for the simple fact that it absorbs the liquidity. It absorbs the buyers. Everybody that thought about buying going bullish. Why would they think about going bullish? Because price in this instant is at its daily high, right? So before this red candle, before this red candle, there was only this green candle. And before that, looking to the left, there was nothing higher than this candle. So the retail trader would think the price is going to continue higher. So once price breaks this level, people think price is going to continue higher. But instead, price comes back, traps traps all these buyers and continues lower. So that's one benefit. The second benefit is the fact that this stop hunt right here is our wick on the one hour. So on the one hour, on the one hour, this wick where we conduct business in is our stop hunt on the one minute or the five minute. Depends on your preference. And the third, the third benefit is that this stop hunt, which is also this one hour, um, one hour candle wick, is also our daily wick. So if you look on the daily time frame, this would be our daily wick too. This would be the the highest point of the of the day. So all these benefits combine into uh, the purpose of trading this stop hunt. So here we have another example. As you can see right now, this is the nine o'clock candle. So the next candle is the 10 to 11 uh, candle that we wait for, which is the peak New York. So where is price right now? Price right now is at its daily low. Why is it at its daily low? Because look to the left, there is nothing lower. Price started off right here, formed a high drop down. It's not like price is, let's say, Let's say price is not somewhere here, right? It's not in the middle of the range. It's not close to the high of the range. It's actually at its extreme at the 10 o'clock time. So what you would do now is you would go in your one minute and you would see where the low was. So where was the low? This was the low of the, the day so far. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for a stop hunt. And after the stop hunt, we would identify our range and we would take a trade based upon that range. Okay, price came back into the range. So what would you do now? You would pull out your, you would pull out your fib. You would take your high that formed the stop hunt and your low that conducted the stop hunt. And once price reached this middle line, you are in the trade. So your one to one is right here. This would be your one to one. You go for a two to one or you can target the fully range extreme. So how would you trade the strategy if price is not at its extreme level at the 10 a.m. open? So this is why we have context when it comes to our New York trading session. So let's say price moves and then price creates its low of the day in New York session. But by the time the 10 a.m. candle, by the time the 9 a.m. candle closes and the 10 a.m. candle opens, price is no longer price is no longer at its extreme right so price is here instead of being somewhere close to here to take out this level so what is your next step right so what you know for a fact is that the low of the day has been created why because the low of the day looking to the left the low of this entire day happened in new york session and price uh distributed uh, uh to the upside so now, instead of looking at price in a way of you're waiting for price to come back all the way down here and take out the stop hunt, this is unlikely because the law of the day already happened. Now, if let's say now, if if this happened, if price was right here. 
almost at the low of the day and or super close, maybe uh, six or seven points away or 10 points away, then you could try and get that hunt. But what if price is here? What if price is a little bit far from our low of the day? So what we could concur is that the low of the day did happen in New York. So now that we know that the low of the day already happened, we are less likely to trade back into our low of the day. So we would look for a continuation. We would look for a reason to take price bullish. Why would we take price bu bullish? Because the low of the day has been set. So it would have it would have make sense to trade back to the low of the day if the low of the day has already been set. Now, if the if the 9 a.m. candle closed and price was at its low of the day, it was at its price extreme already. Then you would wait for that hunt to catch the extreme low of the day. But if the low of the day was already set in New York, now again, if it, if if the low of the day happened in London, this would nullify the trade. Then you just wouldn't use the strategy to trade. But if the low of the day happened in New York, but just not at your trading window which is that 10 a.m to uh 11 a.m and you look back at the previous candle which is your 9 a.m to your 10 a.m candle the low of the day didn't happen there it happened let's say at 7 a.m this is when you would trade a continuation let's go in an example of how you would do this so let's look at this example so the low of the day already occurred in new york why would it be our low of the day because it was the lowest point of the day so far so the fact that that already occurred, you are less likely to get a move post New York. Because remember, New York has majority of the volume. And that's why we wait till post the volume because the market gave us all the clues that we need. So to expect the price is going to have enough volume at 10 o'clock to come back all the way down here, stop on this level and come back up is is insanity, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to trade a continuation. What do I mean by continuation? You're going to try and trade, find the trade above. So let's go to the one minute. So how we're going to trade the continuation? We're going to find our swing and do the exact same thing we do when trading the, da the daily high and low reversal, right? We're going to find our swing. We're going to wait for the stop hunt and use our FIB level to take the trade at fair price. So that already happened because you take your swing high, your swing low. Price came down here and came right back into the 50%. So once price came back to the 50%, you could take your first profit right here. You can take your one to one right here or you can go for your two to one or you could aim for the high of the day, which would be right here. I appreciate you guys watching. On my website, I added two more variables to add to the strategy to make it even more important, to increase your win rate even more. So make sure you guys check that out. The link is in the bio. And make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And make sure you comment and let me know what you guys want me to cover next. Later.